So we're talking about governmental databases, official databases like law enforcement uses, such as CODIS. Uh, it's not just fingerprints anymore. It's swabs of door handles and steering wheels and broken pieces of glass and... Let me introduce Cece Moore. She's a genetic a genealogist, maybe best known for her work on the PBS series Finding Your Roots with Henry Louis Gates Jr. She also has her own company, DNA Detectives, which helps people find long-lost relatives and biological families. And she joins us now from San Clemente, California. Cece uh, Moore, welcome. It's good to have you. Thanks for having me. So someone who works in this field, I'd love to get your sort of reaction to where we started this hour, and that was with the arrest of the, uh, uh, of the alleged Golden State Killer. How do you feel about this uh, technology uh, being put to this kind of use? Well, I have two hats in this. I've got my personal hat, and I've got my community leader hat. Personally, I'm absolutely thrilled about it. I'm extremely proud that the techniques and methods that I help to uh, develop and promote have been used in such an amazing way and given so many people closure. However, on the community hat side of it, I have to say that it is somewhat of a concern to our community because this was something that wasn't even on their radar for the most part, except for maybe the most advanced genetic genealogists. It hadn't occurred to most people that by uploading their DNA to GEDmatch, that that would open it up for law enforcement investigation. And I'll say the vast majority of the community is extremely supportive of law enforcement and this idea, and even really excited about it. Yeah. But there is a subset that feels like their privacy was invaded and worries about the slippery slope concept. The following report is dated on May 3rd, 2018 taken from a program from the neo-pagan radio in which the discussion of DNA is had now, by the sound of it these are promoters for the industry not surprisingly and their job is to get you to agree with this practice they often wear what they call two hats uh, to make pretend that they are you know, balanced in their outlook of these practices. Um, their job is to sell you the product. This product is the elimination of privacy for people to contain the sequence of their DNA uh, to a personal level. Uh, they are seeking to use this information in so many different ways. This is how the monkey rule works. The cases go into court. The rulings are are handed down. Those then give way for the activity uh, surrounding the practice to come. Uh, this particular event or discussion is being had after uh, an event in which the you know, serial killer supposedly of uh, the, you know, California is uh, being, you know, charged uh, with the murders uh, based on DNA evidence. So, typically what these monkeys will do is they'll find those situations in which are difficult to argue with. Um, you know, a child being raped, uh, serial killers, people uh, at risk of being infected by widespread diseases, etc. Um, when they present the case using those examples, uh, they are illustrating, you know, the benefit of so-called humanity. Uh, that, you know, 
no one in their right mind would argue against using these drones to rescue a, a lost child in a barren desert. Yeah, but once they allow these, you know, equipments, these vehicles to be utilized, uh, then they are done so for other purposes. Uh, you know, a great example is the uh, Jane Roe case uh, in which Jane Doe, in which Jane Roe, uh, the abortion was, you know, so-called legalized. Well, during that case, uh, so was pornography. That's what most people don't know. It's because they use these cases. Uh, yesterday or a couple of days ago, we talked about the robots, how the you know, robots will be built for pedophiles, and then those cases, or that case, let's say, will be used to give these robots rights that were previously reserved for living creatures only. Um, if you listen to the language, you know, the woman at the end of the show, or at the end of this segment, uh, uses the word worry. Now, this is common with the neo-pagans. They often use these, these words uh, to frame the argument as if you know, one side is just irrational. They're emotional. They're worried. Yeah. No longer are people concerned. They, they're, now they're worried. Uh, no longer the people desire a better life for them and their next of kin and, uh, and others, yet they want. You see, it, it, it's not desirable to worry. It's not desirable to be anxious. It's not desirable to be weak-minded. Yeah. So by presenting one whole community, is what she refers to it as, as being worried, they're being discarded in the you know, larger state of evolution. Because these people are saying, well, look at how many people are on the earth today. Think about how many people are going to be on the earth tomorrow. Does it really matter what one or a few people are worried about? Yeah. Well, let's break it down, really. You know, this DNA process is giving extraordinary rights to certain individuals over others. Now, how is that? It's because they're being categorized as part of a primitive group, even the Hebrew people. So, you know, those today that call themselves Jews, even if they're not, claim, say, that they are proven to be descendants of Jacob and Isaiah and Abraham and Noah and Adam, all the best of them, simply because somebody told them that on a screen. They submitted their blood. They got a letter back. Oh, you one of us. You know, these people already have a database of every single person. And they are looking to imitate the Creator. Now, how else would you imitate the Creator other than by taking on the story 